I would like to thank the organizers for giving me an opportunity of a talk. And the title of my talk is Hessenberg Varieties and Hyperplane Arrangements. So this is joint work with uh, Takuro Abe, Mikiya Masuda, Satoshi Murai, and Takashi Sato. So um, uh, Hessenberg variety is a sub variety of frog variety. Um, to, its, uh, to study its topology, uh, makes connection with many research areas, such as uh, geometric representation, Gontam cohomology, uh, hyperplane arrangements, and graph theory. And uh, in this talk, I will talk about uh, the connection between Hessenberg varieties and hyperplane arrangements. Okay, uh, first, uh, we begin with the definition of frag variety of type A. So type A uh, frag variety, uh, denoted FLCN. This is a set of uh, naysayed subspace V1, V2, da, 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 Vn. Vn is a whole space Cn. And where uh, dimension of Vi is equal to i for, for any i. This is a definition of frag variety, right? <coughs> and the Hessenberg variety uh, is determined by two data. Uh, first is uh, um, linear operator x. x is a, uh, from Cn to Cn. This is a linear operator. And second, <coughs> h uh, is a uh, sum function. Uh, bracket in is a set of uh, 1, 2, blah, blah. N. The, uh, and this is called uh, a Hessenberg function. And these, uh, these two data determine uh, yeah. determine the uh, Hessenberg variety. This is a sub variety of frag variety. Okay, so uh, first I have to explain the definition of Hessenberg function, right? Okay. Okay, <coughs> definition of Hessenberg function. Function. So H is a uh, is a Hessenberg function if uh, it it is a function it is a function satisfying uh, satisfying two conditions. Uh, first, uh, its value uh, weakly increasing H one H two. Hn. This is first condition. And second condition is <coughs> Hi, H of i is uh, uh, bigger than or equal to i for any i. For any i. This is definition of Hessenberg, uh, Hessenberg function. So very simple. And uh, here uh, we denote We denote Hessenberg function H is uh, is a sequence of its value H1, H2, blah, 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 Hn. This is just notation. It's okay. <coughs> so, uh, for example, now uh, I will explain the example. A 
example n equals 3 case. So what is Hessenberg function? Uh, for example, h equal 1, 2, 3. This is Hessenberg function because uh, its value are weakly increasing and h i is more than or equal to i for any i. And 1, 3, 3, this is Hessenberg function. And 1, uh, no, 2, 2, 3, 2, 3, 3, and 3, 3, 3. three. These guys are all of the Hessenberg function for n equals 3. Okay. And uh, uh, we make, um, sorry, we may, we may think of, uh, we may think Hessenberg function of uh, the collection of boxes like this. So we consider the three box times three box like this. Okay, first case, <coughs> so the, uh, one box and two boxes and three boxes. Second case, one box and three boxes, three boxes, and so on. Two, two, three, two, three, three, and three, 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 like this. And uh, um, so we can, we can, we can consider the, uh, consider the pass from this point to this point, like this. The so second case is uh, is a path uh, like this. So this is called uh, Dick Path. Dick Path. So Dick Path is a, a path from this point uh, to this point. Uh, not over the diagonal line, not over, right? And uh, um, so it is well known that the number of dick passes uh, is equal to Catalan number. So in general, uh, the number of Hessenberg function is equal to uh, Catalan number. So this is called Catalan number. So uh, Catalan number um, have the, have, has, uh, has ma uh, many meanings of uh, counting number. <coughs> anyway, so um, so Hessenberg function correspond to the uh, combinatorial ob object, right? Okay, now uh, we define the Hessenberg variety. Definition of Hessenberg variety. Oops, variety. So x is a uh, linear operator and h is a Hessenberg function. Then uh, Hessenberg variety, Xh, is defined uh, as follows the flag. And so v, v dot means uh, the nested subspaces like this. Uh, such that uh, X of VI is included in VHI for any I. For any I. This is a definition of Hessenberg variety. So recall that X is a uh, okay, x is a uh, linear operator from Cn to Cn, and Vi is a subspace of Cn. And uh, Hessenberg variety is a uh, set of V dot uh, such, such that this, uh, satisfying this condition. 
This is definition of Hessenberg variety. Okay. <coughs> yeah. And if x is nilpotent, then uh, the corresponding Hessenberg variety is called uh, nilpotent Hessenberg variety. And uh, if x is uh, semi-simple, then uh, the corresponding Hessenberg variety, mm, yeah, is called the semi-simple Hessenberg variety. And if x is regular. The corresponding Hessenberg variety is uh, re called regular Hessenberg variety. So, uh, corresponding um, to the property of uh, matrix X, um, then we call the corresponding Hessenberg variety uh, nilpotent, semi simple, regular, respectively. Right? So now um, I try to summarize uh, Hessenberg varieties uh, like this. Mm. Hessenberg variety. And there are three families uh, regular. Nilpotent. I'm sorry. Uh, regular means uh, all of the eigenvalues are different. So th th this means yeah. So um, the Jordan canonical form CL CL yeah, and Jordan canonical form of X and uh, Ci is not equal to Cj if I not equal to J. Thank you for comment. And uh, semi-simple uh, family like this. So there are three three families regular. Uh, new potent and semi simple. <coughs> and uh, this intersection is called uh, regular new potent Hessenberg variety. Regular new potent. And this intersection is called regular semi simple Hessenberg variety. Okay. Okay, first um, we consider the case. So um, the special case of nilpotent Hessenberg variety is called uh, Springer variety. So Springer variety is uh, associated with uh, geometric, geometric, metric uh, representation of a symmetric group S n or symmetric. Okay, uh, next, <coughs> the special case of regular nilpotent Hessenberg variety is called Peterson variety. And Peterson variety is associated with uh, quantum cohomology of frag variety. But uh, I'm not familiar with uh, quantum cohomology theory, so uh, please don't ask. <laughs> Okay, and um, 
So regular semi-simple case, uh, okay, this, this is uh, uh, the, the, to yeah, the toric variety uh, corresponding fan, uh, whose fan is wild chamber. Wild chamber uh, type A. So uh, pre uh, previous speaker, uh, Professor Kaji, uh, talked about uh, this historic variety, a real case, real version. But this is a com uh, complex version. Okay. And moreover, so this area, regular semi-simple case, so this area, um, is associated with uh, graph theory. So um, I, I think uh, this is um, uh, so a beautiful connection with um, graph theory, this area. And on the other hand, this area, regular new potent case, this is associated with hyperplane arrangement. Oops. So, uh, so now uh, I will talk about uh, this connection: uh, regular nilpotent and Hessenberg, uh, <laughs> regular nilpotent and hyperplane arrangement. Okay. So, uh, uh, so uh, moreover, um, there is an um, interesting uh, relationship between regular nilpotent case and regular semi-simple case. So now I, I, I will explain. Uh, let n be a, a regular nilpotent, and let s be a, a regular semi-simple. So uh, we may assume that uh, n is a regular nilpotent matrix uh, with one Jordan block, and s is a, a diagonal matrix C1, C2, Cn with, with uh, distinct eigenvalues Ci. So we may assume that uh, n and s is like this. Okay, so cell M. Uh, Abe Hirak and Megumi Harada and Mikiya Matsuda. So the cohomology ring of regular nilpotent Hessenberg variety. And the, the cohomology ring of regular semi-simple Hessenberg variety So these guys are not isomorphic in general But taking SN invariant parts uh, This is, these guys are isomorphic as rings So we are uh, SN acts on the cohomology ring of regular semi-simple Hessenberg variety. This is um, introduced by Timotsko. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, our method is uh, to use GKM graph. So this is using ZKM graph. <coughs> Um, but I'm sorry, uh, I don't explain for the detail this action here. Yeah, uh, maybe I think uh, SN uh, does not act on this space. Yeah, toric space, H is a special case, and this is a toric variety um, corresponding finite variety chamber. This is a SN acts on yeah, toric variety space. But in general? In general, yeah, I don't think so. So this naive uh, interpretation of uh, coordinate changes does not give you, it's, it's it's not closed. It's not closed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, mm. yeah, so uh, I, I have one comment. So this action, uh, so Timotsko constructed this action by algebraic, uh, but um, after that, uh, Brosna and Chow um, 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 uh, give uh, another another um, interpretation this action of this action using monodromy. Yeah. So. But you said this is mm -hmm. using GKM graph. So. Yeah. GKM graph. You need that. So what? Ah. Uh, okay. Four sections does it? Ah. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, full flag bright. Ah. Uh, okay. So. Maximal torus. Uh, yeah. Right? And. Uh, yeah. And regular semi-simple case. Uh, preserve, yeah, and it's uh, equi equivalent cohomology ring is a uh, can be described by GKM graph. It's okay. Yeah, and uh, oops, um, so uh, until now um, we we consider the type A Hessenberg variety, D type A, but um, we can define, we can define the uh, Hessenberg variety in any type, so any type frog variety, uh, the sub variety of any type frog variety. We can define the Hessenberg variety in any type. So uh, there is a natural question. So is this ring isomorphism true in any types? So the answer is yes. So this is the main theorem. Takuro uh, Abe. So in any types, to do I I'm sorry. So this is joint to work. <laughs> sorry. In any types. So the cohomology ring of regular nilpotent Hessenberg variety <coughs> and the cohomology ring of regular semi-simple Hessenberg variety, it's a W invariant part. W is a wide group. Wide group. These guys are isomorphic as rings through the quotient ring.
so what, what is a quotient ring? So this is uh, coming from uh, hyperplane arrangement. Quotient by what? Uh, oh, sorry, R of H. Sorry, <laughs> hyperplane arrangement. Okay, so now uh, I will explain the quotient ring R mod A H. First, uh, we define the um, hyperplane arrangement associated with uh, Hessenberg function H. So um, I will explain using an example. For example, H equals 3344. Uh, this is a Hessenberg function like this 3344. And <coughs> we can define a hyperplane arrangement. associated with H, uh, like this. So first, <coughs> we marked the boxes, uh, the circuitry uh, below a position. And this, po uh, this component is 3, uh, 2, 1, and 3, 1, 3, 2, and 4, 3. Oh, sorry, like this. And we define a hyperplane arrangement. It's like this, H12, H13, H23, H34. So this uh, subscript corresponds to the uh, coordinate of uh, these guys. And where Hij is a hyperplane in Rn, uh, so with ice, ice component is equal to J's component. Hij is a hyperplane like this. <coughs> yeah. So uh, this construction is very simple. And next, uh, we consider the, uh, this is called the logarithmic derivation module. Logarithmic uh, derivation module. So um, this is, mm, so this geometrically meaning is uh, the um, <coughs> polynomial vector field on Rn um, tangent to the hyperplane arrangement A of H. Yeah. So anyway, the definition is like this. Definition is D of <coughs> A H is defined as follows. So the sum, uh, the element of derivation. Uh, the the element of D of A H is a, a derivation. As this is a polynomial. Satisfying uh, theta of alpha h is um, is an element of uh, alpha h. Th this means the uh, um, ideal of 
ID will be generated by alpha H for any H. <coughs> H is a, a hyperplane, hyperplane in A of A, A sub H. And where alpha of H is a, a defining linear equation. This is a defining linear equation. So, so its kernel uh, is equal to h. So anyway, <laughs> uh, I will explain the uh, example of d of h. For well, h equal three, three, four, four. So previous example, this case, and. Um, Theta of theta is uh, like this. Uh, this is a derivation, and uh, this is an element of D of A H. So because uh, we we have to check these conditions for every hyperplane, every hyperplane. So, for example, uh, so first, alpha h of ij. So h of ij, recall that h of ij is a hyperplane uh, with um, i's component and j's component is, equal, is the same. So this uh, defining equation is uh, xi minus xj. Xi. So theta of alpha one two uh, alpha h one two is uh, uh, this is um, uh, like this. So this is uh, generated by alpha h one two h one two is x one minus x two. So, um, <coughs> theta satisfies uh, this condition for h equal h12. And uh, uh, we, we can check the all of uh, other hyperplane, uh, we can check that um, this condition satisfies for, for this theta. Okay. So uh, I have one comment. So in hyperplane arrangement side, so this logarithmic derivation module have been much studied. So yeah, this is one comment. And so um, finally, uh, we define a, a R tilde of H is defined by like this. Theta. Yeah. The where Q is a uh, uh, Q is a, uh, a quadratic, quadratic form like this. So this is a, a W invariant. W is a wild group. W invariant um, quadratic form. So we take. Uh, we take this Q, this Q, and so this is this is an ideal of polynomial ring. This is an ideal of polynomial ring. And uh, finally, this is a technical part. Um, so there is a, a surjection map from polynomial ring to the quotient ring. Um, x1, xn, mod x1 plus xn. So this is denoted by car r. This is a 
symmetric algebra of testa in type A. Type A case is like this. And so R tilde of H is an ideal of uh, this polynomial ring. And R H is an image of R tilde H. And um, taking quotient ring, these guys are isomorphic to the cohomology ring of regular nilpotent Hessenberg variety as rings, and the cohomology ring of regular semi simple Hessenberg variety and its W invariant part uh, uh, isomorphic as rings. So, I stop here. Thank you. <laughs>